you see that um, sphere at the center called Earth. Earth is an anagram for heart. Yeah. It is always the core of the system. Core means heart. And so this is the, the Logos is the creator of these worlds. The Logos, Logos means word. Um, word in Latin is verb. Verb is vibrate, vibration. Vibration is sound. Reverberate, radiate. Now, what this is showing is that the Lord, by ever which name we wish to call him, Jehovah, Allah, uses energies called electricity to create material worlds. And the powerhouse which um, produces this vibratory force is magnetism, divine magnetism. And um, this force uh, of electricity is the what's called the second creator, the demiurgos, the god of matter, because it vibrates and it uses five different kinds of electricity. And the five different kinds of electricity um, are the same kinds that our body uses for the senses. Um, there are different. There is a different um, electrical circuitry in our nervous system for um, for eye, for vision, for sight, for the sense of sight, and there is um, different electricity used for smell, um, and for touch, and for um, for for hearing. So light works on the sight, and vibration works on the sound. Now, usually. Um, the two most common forms of electricity are those two there. And so this is where the Logos becomes the creator through sound or the creator that produces through light. And so the sound that the creator uses is OM, OM, or ATOM. And this is why the Egyptians say all is ATOM. And and that is the sound of creation, and all theologies have have this um, atomic, um, Adamic, um, God-like theology because it's all based on atomic electrical vibration. Okay, so um, atom and Adam are, are etymologically similar too. Yeah, and notice you said etymologically because what is etymology if not the science of Atom, it's everything is the science of atom. So is your anatomy. <laughs> yeah. And so, and you will find, um, if you look at my presentations dealing with uh, atom, you will understand this. It's pretty clear because, because the ecliptic is called atom. The sine wave is called atom. That's, and that's the big secret. That's the big, big secret that the, that all sine waves are called atom. They are all atomic. So an atom is a sine wave. It's a thought wave universe. And so when you speak about the logos, you have the first logos, the first cause. Then you have the second expansion. So that would be uh, Krishna. And then he expands into um, Balarama, his brother, uh, and it becomes Narayan or um, Vishnu or Mahavishnu. And then Mahavishnu is the creator of the all the worlds, and then Brahma creates the physical worlds. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. But um, but this is the Jewish Kabbalistic Hebrew system. Now, so you can see here these are the ten spheres, and at the very very top is the cause and the source of all of this. Above the rose, um, the red rose of the Rosicrucians, you see that um, golden pyramid and it points upward to the um, the supernal um, Empyrean. And so outside of these ten conditions of these ten spheres in which we live um, is the cause, um, the spiritual causes of these worlds, and that is the Empyrean, and that is an unconditioned abode. And so out of that unconditioned abode comes all of these conditioned abodes that we, um, that we 
uh, witness and we are living in one of those called the solar system. We call it a solar system, but it's a universe. We live in a universe unto itself, as, as we're going to see in a minute. And this is the Babylonian system. So you see a pyramid um, with 10 spheres or 10 steps, uh, sorry, 7 steps um, upward and 7 steps downward. And in the middle is the um, 15th um, sphere or uh, you could call it a sphere, but it's a, it's a plane. It's a planet and, and that is the Earth. Okay, so similar system. Um, here are some of the scriptures which um, which really point to a flat Earth, and um, in the in the in the Bible, uh, Isaiah is a good one here. Isaiah forty twenty two. He sits enthroned above the circle of the Earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. And so, and um, other scriptures tell, um, tell, um, tell forth a lot of truth too. Joshua 10, 13, where um, Joshua caused the, um, asked the Lord to make the sun stand still. Well, here we, we, this myth and, and um, cosmology is teaching that, um, you know, the sun is in, has a trajectory. That's the, um, the hidden truth, the um, anagogic truth hiding behind these beautiful um, uh, allegories and uh, mythologies, you know. Um, here is another scripture which I, I really enjoy. Um, actually, if you go back to Isaiah, it says, and continues saying, he stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Well, if you remember my uh, graphic of the um, tent-like TP structure in which the sun goes up to the Tropic of Cancer and um, very, very high up in the sky and, um, and then goes down the TP on an, on an incline to the Tropic of Capricorn. Well, um, this um, contraction expansion vortex that the sun is creating is, um, is this tent that is spread out, this tabernacle for the sun. And if you look at um, Psalms 19.4, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line, this is the ecliptic, has gone out through all the earth and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. It rejoices as a strong man to run his course. So it shows there that the sun is is um, truly marching along a um, uh, a circuit. It is making. It is clearly. It's making a circle in the sky. Now, here, if you spend some time here meditating on the analemma as it is superimposed upon the stereographic plain earth, you will see how the um, analema confirms and proves and is evidence of a flat earth um, plane and um, a sun doing clockwise circles above the uh, earth plane. Now, it is my opinion that, um, that the circles that the sun is doing are not perfectly concentric. And I, I believe that the sun is slightly off-centred, which causes the, um, the analema shape in the sky. Otherwise, I believe that if it was concentric, the analema would consist of a perfectly straight line. Yeah. Now, I might be wrong. There might be other explanations for this. But um, definitely, um, even with the ball earth model, uh, there is, um, scientists know that the sun is further away from us at the Tropic of Cancer. In fact, they say it's about 3 million miles further away from, uh, from the Earth, the sun is. And it's, um, again, 4 or 5 million miles closer to the Earth at the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, these figures are totally, totally exaggerated because they assume and presume that the uh, sun is 93 million miles away from us, which is which it is not, and you can just um, 
do simple tests to confirm that the sun's only a few thousand um, miles above our heads. So probably um, 4,000 miles, I don't know. Um, some say about 5,000, 5 or 6,000 miles. It's really interesting how uh, the um, you, you were saying that the sun travels clockwise, uh, that Mount Meru is in the centre. Uh, as, a, as a Buddhist practitioner, uh, we circumambulate the stupas, which are very much like uh, the Mount Meru when we make offerings, mandala offerings. We're actually building uh, a, a mandala in, and calling it Mount Meru. Uh, and we're circumambulating uh, when, we do, when we're on pilgrimage around stupas um, in this exact format. So we're looking at um, uh, the, the correlation between Vedic and Tibetan astrology or the yeah. Eastern philosophies in regards to the procession of the, of the sun around this, this plane of existence. Yeah, look, um, the, where people need to focus is on the ecliptic. And that's where I've always been pointing all the time in all of my presentations, regardless of the model which I've used, yeah. the erroneous Cop um, Copernican model. It, it matters not what shape the earth is for the sake of syncretism. Syncretism and the ecliptic are the stand on their own. They yeah. teach, um, they teach and they contain all of their own wisdom and knowledge just standing on their own merits. The ecliptic is the teacher of all things, the sine wave, as it is a thought wave universe. Everything is waves. And um, so this wave can be best studied um, through the ecliptic because it's, um, it's a fractal that is large enough for us to um, contemplate quite easily. For instance, we can begin at the start of the sine wave at March the 21st and we can go every day for a day along the year and we can have a look at all the holy days and we can see that they all occur along the ecliptic in harmony with the sun travelling up and down its tent-like incline upward to the Tropic of Cancer and downward to the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, take a look. If you've got a Christmas tree, Take a look. Um, uh, most people uh, listening will have a Christmas tree uh, standing somewhere in their homes. Have a look at the angle of that Christmas tree. Above the Christmas tree is always a five-pointed star. And, and um, the Christmas tree is basically telling us about the sun on its incline travelling up to the Tropic of Cancer. See, it's now at the bottom of the Christmas tree. It's at the very bottom. Yeah, yeah. It's Christmas Day is the 25th 5th of yeah. December and it has to go from the bottom of the Christmas tree up to the Tropic of Cancer where Sirius, um, it, where the sun will be conjunct Sirius, its mother, um, in the Tropic of Cancer at the top of the Christmas tree. So you see, we already, the science is already in place. All we have to do is focus on the ecliptic, and the ecliptic will, will teach us all things. And this is why tropical, tropical astrology is um, uh, the foundation of all schools of astrology, all of them. All of them must bow down to tropical astrology because the ecliptic and the constellations on the ecliptic are more... Um, um, influential and um, powerful and the primary force of astrology in our solar system or solar cell. And so this is why it, um, it is always accurate in um, all of its um, applications. For instance, medical astrology um, is perfectly accurate in the tropical system. And also, um, when you look at the um, physiological features and characteristics of the, um, each particular sign, uh, you will see that um, they coincide only in the Western tropical system, whereas they are not correct. You, um, you cannot discern the uh, physical, facial features of a uh, 
a sign, astrological sign, using the um, sidereal system. It's it's out of it's out of sync, and I've proven that in my presentations. So here we have another uh, flat Earth um, graphic, and you see the analemma. Um, so you can see there very very clearly that um, the larger um, the larger portion of the analemma indicates that the sun is travelling much much uh, wider arced circles and much faster. It is actually um, definitely covering more territory in the so-called southern hemisphere. Yeah. And there is the uh, analemma from the northern hemisphere perspective. If you went down to say Argentina and filmed the photograph the analemma um, for a year, uh, you would find that the loop is upside down. Again, again showing the confirming the um, the equidistant azimuthal um, plane is uh, the correct one. Amazing. So I'll leave that for the uh, viewer to um, read. Um, here we have again another um, depiction. You have a central um, magnetic uh, north uh, where you have beautiful fertile lands above the uh, Arctic Circle and um, where you're not allowed to go, of course. And then you see a serpent like Ouroboros on the outside perimeter, and this is the Antarctic region. And you see the pancakes below the earth, they seem to indicate um, uh, subterranean planetary systems. Is and that where Admiral Byrd went, do you think, brother? Yeah, look, um, I'm not quite sure about Admiral Byrd. Um, I tend to think that there might be more... Uh, co-opting with those types I don't um, I don't trust the guy at all um, you know he might have been the youngest general or whatever and very intelligent but um, you know I, I just watch the man talk and I just don't trust him uh, I believe they are just um, he was just there to um, you know dramatize the uh, mineral and um, the material uh, wealth of Antarctica and the uh, Arctic regions just to sort of give um, more uh, authority to, um, to so-called governments to protect those areas and keep us away from there and national security and blah, blah, blah and all of this rot. Um, I think they just um, schemed it up all along. Um, but, yes, I do believe that um, it is somewhere in those regions we have access to the inferior worlds, and this is where all your um, so-called aliens and, I don't know, reptilians, greys, um, ETs are coming from. Uh, they won't be coming from other universes, as I will we'll be showing um in a couple of minutes, they'll be coming from um, below and not from above. So here we've got uh, the city of Brahma just above the central magnetic mountain um, in a dome-like structure. I don't believe it's it's like a, um, a physical dome. I think it's a luminous dome um, just as the... Energy dome. Energy dome, you say. Yeah, yeah, well, it's all energy. I mean, even the Earth is just, um, it's, is a luminous body. It's just, we call it solid and dense because it's dense light. But the moon is of a different quality of, um, of light, um, and it's not solid like ours. The Earth is what we call terrestrial, but none of the planets are terrestrial. Mars is not terrestrial. They can't send probes there and to, you know, <laughs> stroll around on the planet. They're not going to Mars. They're actually going to subterranean places, and and they're lying. And 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 Mars is not millions and millions, you know, one billion miles away. They're just a few thousand miles up, and they're stars, or rather, they are luminous bodies. 
they are also demigods, archons, um, the demiurgos. They are the body of the demiurgos, the demiurge. They are, they are the composite of Jehovah. They are one of Krishna, Krishna's expansions. Um, there's many ways to describe them, but they are definitely not terrestrial. And you can't go and, you know, physical <laughs> astronauts, you can't go there. For a start, they're not qualified. You know, um, the Hindus teach that uh, only qualified beings can go to the moon and the spheres after the moon. So only the rishis get to go there. Now, so at the bottom of this plane here, we see uh, Jambudweep. Jambudweep is the um, the flat point from where all of um, our Earth extends from this central point here. And of course, this is Mount Meru, Mount Sumeru, Samaria, Moriah, uh, Zion, um, uh, Sinai, the Olympus. This is all the sacred mountains, guys. It's all mount, yeah. magnetic mountain in the center of the earth, the earth plane. And so here we have the path of the sun. Again, you see the small red circle is Cancer, Tropic of Cancer. And, and this is why, please remember that all the ancients said that souls come in the gate of the um, gate of men at the Tropic of Cancer and they leave, souls leave the solar system at the Tropic of Capricorn, which is called the gate of the gods. So keep that in mind when you see, when you envision this tent-like structure in which the sun goes up on a ramp to the Tropic of Cancer and down the ramp, ram, lamb, Lamb of God, <laughs> um, down to the Tropic of Capricorn. And so it is a ramp, and um, as it goes, as it contracts up to the Tropic of Cancer, souls come into this um, cell. They filter down from the um, Milky Way galaxy, as Plato describes it, and then they come through all the rings, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon, then they come to the heart, Earth, same word. And then as the sun expands and it goes, and, and sorry, as it, it um, yeah, expands, as it um, climbs down the ramp from the Tropic of Cancer, it um, souls um, leave this plane from the Tropic of Capricorn. Here is an artist's impression of all the worlds, and as you will see there, there is a central tree, the Yggdrasil tree, where um, this toroidal field emanates from, and the plane projects outwardly probably um, ad infinitum. We have no idea, but there's probably, um, you know, beyond Antarctica, there's probably other um, dome-like um, cell uh, structures which are called universes, and um, they project forever on a plane, or perhaps it's finite, and um, and it has, you know, um, a um, a term terminal point. And so, but nonetheless, what you're going to see is how the universe is created by the root cause of all causes and how um, these material worlds are drawn back in again in, um, in one of the in-breaths of either Vishnu or Brahma. And, it's, really, um, it's really interesting, you know, looking at the birth and the death of Jesus, Horus, Dionysus, uh, Attis, Adonis, all the sun gods, we're seeing the same story over and over again where, um, you know, the... The, as you as you were talking before, it reminded me of the you know the birth and the death of this sun god. Yep, yep. And the sun um, the sun dies uh, when it reaches the tropic of Canc uh, Capricorn. It actually dies each time it passes a tropical point. In fact, um, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. But Capricorn is the nastiest one. Um, from the projection or from the uh, 
vantage point of the um, people who live in the Northern Hemisphere in particular because um, you see that brings the cold weather which is cruel and um, which is Saturnian and, and Saturn is Satan and so Saturn rules the winter you see and so of course yesterday was St Tom's Day well Tom is um, is Saturn you know it's um, all of these um, dualistic gods who bring uh, heat and cold and so uh, along the ecliptic, um, all of the sacred days that um, are close to the equinoxes and solstices um, all have to do with Tom and Thomas. Very interesting, isn't it? It is. So without syncretism, you can never really um, fathom uh, the complete picture of um, the uh, ancient cosmologies. You, you just you have to embrace all of the... Um, all of the uh, theologies and sciences. So, mm. so what we have here, this is very cle clever artistic depiction of how the um, Taurus field centering this, um, these two um, um, electrically charged um, uh, dome-like um, structures. The, you see the blue above and the red below. Red always depicts um, infernal hellish realms and blue is always sky, heaven, um, God-like, and, and sort of more to do with a consciousness and, and, um, and I guess um, the spiritual nature of things, whereas red is usually depicting physical, um, um, the physical material world. Um, please keep this graphic in mind because this one is very, very, very telling. Uh, and notice the tor the Taurus field in the centre of these two domes. Mm. Um, yeah, this is how this is how it truly is. It it has to be like this, as you will see in a minute. Um, so this is what's going on, uh, Eilish. You see here, you see the Idrisal tree. Okay, you see galaxies in the shape of an apple, in the shape of a. And Earth, they've put a they've put a globe in here erroneously, but you get the point. It's the core, it's the middle, and then they've put a man in here. They've put an apple in here. Well, what this is all about is Taurus fields. You see, because the original word for the bull was Apis, and apples Apis is the root of Apollo, the apples wow. of Apollo, mm -hmm. and so. And this is what an apple is. It's a bull. It's a Taurus field. You see the the um, the core of the apple, the heart of the apple, the heart of the tree, the heart of the human being. It's the core, the cardiac, the heart, the Taurus. And so this word apis, apple, Apollo, arbor. You see, this is why an, 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 a tree is an arbor. Well, that arbor is really just an anagram for abra. Ab is ap. Ap and, and ab are interchangeable. And so this is why you always have Krishna, the Lamb of God, is always playing with his cows, you see, yeah. or tauruses. And he creates wow. the tauruses with his flute, you see. He just mm. plays with his flute and he creates worlds. Mm. This is the the first logos you were talking about before because the world is created with vibration whether it's the electricity of sound or whether it's the electricity of sight or smell but um but they are electrical forces they are vibratory um fields of toroidal fields and the sine wave is wrapped around these little toruses these little cows Okay, yeah. or apples. You can call them apples. You can call them Apollos. You can call you can call them Saturns. This is what Saturn's rings are doing. They're not rings, really. They're they're energy emanation. They're just fields of energy going outwardly in its Taurus field. Because below the rings will be a red, um, the red portion of that um, uh, energy, and then above Saturn's rings will be the blue. Yeah. 
Here we have um, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration um, the Research Centre, um, the Army's Research Centre and Dryden Flight Research Facility. And in uh, point three of the concluding remarks of this report, they say um, this report derives and defines a set of linearised system mattresses uh, for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Now, so why would they, you know, train pilots in this, um, you know, uh, non-rotating Earth model? Um, you know, it's tantamount to putting square wheels, square training wheels on your, um, your um, children's um, bicycles to train them with square wheels so that they can ride better later with um, um, circular wheels uh, when they, um, you know, uh, graduate from square wheels. You know, it doesn't make sense. Flip-flopping from um, glo globular gravitational um, spheres to flat non-rotating plane is totally... I mean, can you imagine the havoc of flip-flopping between these two systems? Obviously, there is only one system, and, and that, as, um, as um, um, exposed here and um, admitted by the, this um, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, there's only one model, and that's the flat Earth non-rotating. And so um, this picture here is very handy to um, explain the vanishing point. Uh, and so from the viewer's um, viewpoint, uh, vantage point, they would see everything in the, um, on the flat earth, they would see it disappear on the horizon, no matter how big it is. And no matter whether it's, um, you know, um, a luminous body like the sun, it will set, uh, quote unquote, set because... It has to vanish um, as it gets further away. And so um, this, this argument of, of the sun setting and it appears to go over the horizon and under is um, totally, totally erroneous. And it's, um, it is a truth of appearances. It's not an absolute truth. So, but um, to absolutely prove that the sun is circling above a flat plane, um, all you need to do is go up in a jet. And these days, they are kind enough to take you up to about 45,000 feet, I believe. <laughs> and so what you will see um, when you look out the left window and the right window is that the horizon comes up to your eye level. Yeah. And no matter how big the circumference, they say the circumference of the Earth is 25,000 um, miles. Now, even if it was 250 million miles in circumference, you would not see the horizon at 50, 45,000 feet in altitude come up to your eye level. You simply wouldn't see that. You would see a falling away or at <laughs> least... Right. It would there would be a drop off point where you just wouldn't see buildings anymore, tall buildings. It's, no. I, I find it remarkable. I live in Geelong and from where I live on the hill, I look over the bay and I can see the high rises in Melbourne across the bay of in Port Phillip Bay. And if we were living on a on a on a ball earth, those buildings that I see across the water, across a, quite a big bay, uh, would, I wouldn't be able to see them, you know. Um, but those buildings would have fallen away. But I see them across the water. And, and mm, some people might say, oh, yes, but that's because we're on a really big globe. But there, there's, uh, you know, and, and I've been watching a lot of Eric Dubai's arguments about this about the distance and about how buildings should start looking like they're on an angle because you know you, you you're dipping over the edge and you never see that they're always straight and you can see them no matter how far you go just with a telescope you know yeah exactly um yeah there's been some shenanigans going on in the media with um 
photographs of Chicago clearly seen a hundred miles across the Lake Michigan and um, you can actually see the whole skyline all of it not just the tops of the buildings um, you can see it all of it and it actually ramps up you can see in the picture that the Chicago skyline actually ramps up to your eye level there's no falling away at all and so this is the marvelous thing how is it that people in the city of Genova in Italy can actually see Corsica 99 miles away and the island of Elba um, 125 miles away now that should be about 8,000 feet below the level and yet you're sitting in a cafe in Geneva and you can just see the whole island of Elba rising up like a ramp to your horizon you can sit there and drink coffee and just watch it and and supposedly we're we're li living on a globe with a circumference of 25,000 miles man you can you should be able to see um you should be able to see arc and drop off with the imperfect eyesight that we have as humans um we should be able to see it just within eye shot anywhere anywhere now when i go um driving around in the um in the mountains here near the ocean uh, i can see ocean for hundreds of miles and um, it's all the whole skyline is flat and it ramps up to my eye level and i'm on the mountains I'm standing on the mountains and I can see flat earth ramping up to my um, eye level 360 degrees around me. Now let's continue on. Um, here we have uh, Mahavishnu or Narayan, um, the four-armed version of Krishna, uh, dreaming and from his um, navel a lotus stem uh, comes forth and he creates all these bubbles all these universes where um, his um, uh, causal uh, energy is um, distributed in in expansions um, infinitely through the universe and so what we have here is we have um, a creative process and this is what I'm going to in a minute we're going to go back to this chart here um, Eilish can you see this Yep. You can. Okay. Well, what we have here, um, what we have here is um, the Vedic system, and the pink lotus at the very, very top. This is the causal um, world, uh, as you can see. Uh, that's Krishna's abode. That's called um, Vrindavan, and then below that, there's. Um, a middle white portion that's the white light that's the effulgence of the creator the prime creator and that's what's called Brahma Jyoti and that's the white light of the creator and so that separates the spiritual um, superior world from the um, inferior uh, physical world below and this is where we are we live in one of these bubbles one of these spheres so we live inside a sphere and what we're going to do uh, um, later is we're going to have a look at this here can you see where my cursor is yep right well um, in the middle of these these are the 15 planets and um, seven of them are um, heavenly planets and hence um, subtle and those are moon through Saturn and then in the middle is the earth um, and that is gross and subtle and then below us are seven planes called the gross planets and um, this is a universe okay so we're gonna have a look at that and so this explains why the ancients um, are always creating dome-like structures for their um, religious edifices because what they, they are doing is they are um, mimicking or copying the heavens you see these are 
these are resembling the nature of the spiritual world around us and how the physical world is an effect of it. These are symbols and notice how some of these domes, the artwork inside them like the Sistine Chapel has um, all of the account of creation and you would be surprised to see that um, the account is very scientific. It's very cosmological and mythological and you need to understand how to interpret the um, the artwork of the likes of Michelangelo. You cannot um, interpret these literally. There's no literal rendition that will um, give justice to these beautiful um, works of art. But um, I would like to tackle that one day myself and um, show um, show the true story of creation and how it is. Here is um, how this dome-like structure is perceived by the um, the alchemists. The uh, firmament is the sphere in which we have to leave to become enlightened and illumined because outside of that sphere there is no sunshine. There is a different kind of light. It's a superior light. So the disclosure with the Truman Show and even even terms like the Thunderdome, you know, like in Hollywood there's, there's disclosure. These are the, oh, yeah, and we've seen nuts there or nut there. Uh, these are all disclosures revealing the nature of what we're living in, a disc dome or a disc um, flat disc with a, within a sphere, as you said. Yep, yep. See, the goddess Nut, the starry dome, had to be held up. Um, what that's showing is that there are forces at work to keep our cosmos functioning, you know, and those forces are called Nitas, which we call natural, which we call the gods. And so... All this so-called worship of the gods is not actually worship of the gods at all. It is worship through the gods to worship one god. And that one god is a trinity. Um, you will always see a trinity of gods, Isis, um, Osiris, and Horus. Or you will see um, Krishna, Balaram, and Radharani. Or you will see, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this, this is a divine, sacred secret. Many people, <clears throat> excuse me. Or Shiva, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva the, in the Hindu tradition. Yep, exactly. And so, but notwithstanding it being a trichotomy, God, it is still one God, and it is a, it is a God of person and a God of form. It has spiritual form. You see, some people say, "Oh, God is fo formless. God is white light." No, no, that's that's God's God's effulgence. But behind the effulgence is a person, a form with um, with um, qualities, love. Um, endless love, uh, justice, wisdom, knowledge, wealth, abundance, and is the fountain and source of all things in all potencies. And there is nothing lacking in that person, you see. And we are of that person. We are units, uh, deific units of that person. We are atoms. Uh, yes, we are atoms. All is atom. So we are Adamites. Of course we are Adamites because we have an anatomy, an atomy <laughs> made of atoms. And so and so in order us in order for us to be persons with individuality, um, there has to be a source causal person. And, and 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 for us to have a form, you see, we we look at this body and we think we are the body, but we are not. We have a spiritual form. 
which causes this form. And so it's that so-called formless part of us which manifests this, um, this form, physical form that we see. And so um, continuing, continuing on with the slides because I wanted to get, I want to get back to that graphic. How much time do we have remaining there, um, Eilish? Uh, we've got half an hour, Santos. Mm -hmm. And um, some viewers were wondering if they could call in, but finish your presentation first, and then if we have time, uh, we yeah, can yeah. answer questions. Yeah, we can do that. I'm nearly finished. So yeah. there's the UN flag. Um, there's a lot of symbolism here, guys, a lot of symbolism here. And unfortunately, a lot of half-cocked, so-called truthers um, are going out there saying that the Flat Earth um, movement is a psyop by the Jesuits and they're trying to sell us a flat world order and um, so forth. They're, um, they're half-cocked and um, they need to do their research properly and they need syncretism, you know, quite frankly. Um, the psyop is the ball. And it's been around since the fifth, uh, early 1500s, and that is the only psyop that is keeping us in a um, in a prison, um, in a cult of um, shortage and uh, scarcity um, uh, worshippers. Um, these these creatures that in government that um, subscribe to these shortage. Um, uh, notions, they are controlled by the demonic forces from the planes below our earth. That's where, yeah. that's, where the, that's where they're coming from, man. Those guys down there, they want to control what goes on on our planet because we're supposed to be in paradise. We're supposed to be enjoying paradisical conditions and brotherly love and bliss and, you know, well, you can't have perfect bliss on planes, you, on planets. You can only have bliss on spiritual planets. There's, there is no bliss, pure bliss, on any material planets in the universe, period. So there's your Santa so ball. Topping from the bottom. Sorry? Yeah. They're topping from the bottom. They're dominating yeah. beneath us. Yeah. Santa so, ball. Yeah, the Santa ball. So what I want to do now... Um, is the last thing I want to do is go to my graphic here. Uh, gee, where did I go? Where did it go? Uh, just go back. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, here we go. Let's do it this way. All right. What I want to do now is finish with this and then we can do questions and answers. And so the middle portion here, um, Eilish, this is the white light where the um, Maya Davis go. And a Maya Davi um, is, is uh, someone who preaches um, to that, that all, is, all is one. Um, God is light, white light, and and they teach that we can actually merge with that light and be in bliss forever in that white light. Well, you know that's that's true. It is very true, but it's um it's not the absolute truth. And the absolute truth is that beyond the white light, there is um there is a being, there is a uh, a person in which um there is a spiritual world totally separate um, from this world in which we live where activity can um, can happen forever in one mode of time and which is the forever present the forever now so this is the forever world of now and um, outside of that world below the um, Brahmananda or Brahma Jyoti world here in the middle is um, the inferior worlds, and that's what I want to do. I want to expand on that and go down in there and have a look at what's going on in there. So basically, what you can see down the bottom here is you can see um, Vishnu is dreaming up 
um, this world uh, through his his navel and the lotus that is growing. And what you have here is navel his umbilical. Sorry. Navel gazing. Yeah, yeah. Look, because they in the spiritual world, um, the senses uh, are intermingled. You see, in the physical worlds, um, we can only see with our eyes. We can't see with our ears. You know, we can't hear with our eyes mm. and vice versa, versa. You know, each energy is specialised and we, um, we can only, um, in the Kali Yuga, we can only use um, um, the organs for one sense, you see. Whereas in the Kriya, in the... Um, uh, spiritual world there, um, the senses um, can perform all the other functions of all the other senses. And so uh, to create is merely um, a wish. It's merely a dream. And so Vishnu, Mahavishnu, um, creates this expansion. And you see here we have uh, virtually we have Brahma's world now. And this is the world of two octaves. Okay, so... What you will see here in this world um, is you will see the earth is in the middle. They've actually got it de depicted here as a sphere, which um, yeah. hopefully will be corrected very, very soon because the, um, the Vedic people and the Hare Krishnas are um, uh, very, very conscious and um, very... Uh, knowledgeable of the transcendental science so and what this is this is the middle planet okay this is the uh, the heart chakra of the whole system if you like and mm -hmm. uh, above us are the higher planets uh, which are subtle and you'll notice that the very highest pl planet is called Sat Satyaloka well that Sat that is actually Saturn same word as Saturn and then, of course, um, you'll remember the first graphic I showed you in the Kabbalistic s system. Um, this is Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mercury, Moon. And then here is the Earth plane. And then underneath this plane, there are seven uh, lower planets. And yeah. the, lowest, the lowest planet here... Um, this is uh, pa Patala, and this is the these are the hellish planets, and um, yeah. the the amount of pleasure in these uh, realms is very very limited. It's much more limited than what we should have on our Earth. Although um, the creatures who come from Atala and Vitala and Sutala. Um, and who pretend to be uh, kind, loving aliens from other worlds, uh, they're actually controlling our planet so much to the point that we, uh, our level of uh, bliss has been severely diminished. And so um, what, what is happening is these uh, is like these um, planets are all swimming in their own waters as the earth is, uh, cosmic waters, and they are all planes, um, equally as large as our earth, and they are below our earth. And basically life graduates from here and gets to incarnate on our planet. And then from there we take on the heroic um, nature, we become... Uh, a Hebrew or a Jew in the um, Kabbalistic system. In the Greek system, we become a hero. Um, in the um, um, Vedic system, we become a demigod, or we, you know, we take on their um, their energy. And so, as you go up higher, um, to get to get out of these this this bubble, these uh, sphere like. Um, worlds uh, we need to ex escape basically and um, that's what the churches are supposed to, supposedly there for us there to do to help us to escape from these material planes 
So if you go to the Hare Krishnas, they will teach you that if you chant the Maha Mantra, which is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare, 16 words, um, you will go to Krishna Loka. You will not go to the white light and you, where you will enjoy. Um, so uh, let me show you what they call it. See, they call that Brahmananda, which is called the all-pervading impersonal bliss. So most of you... Um, go on. It's also, a model, it's also a perfect model of samsara, the Buddhist version of what we're talking about here, the... This is a finite uh, system, um, both with upper realms and lower realms. Um, it, but they're all they they do have a finite quality to them, and it's the nirvanas, the the higher universes um, of of the omniverse that we we need to aspire to. So this is still the 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 multi dimensions of suffering and in, and impermanence that we're having a look at here on this universal model of the of the flat planes um, of existence but then we can reach higher realms and this is what the the buddhist masters teach too so go on santos it's just it's correlating a lot with other eastern philosophies i've studied absolutely it must correlate because that's what syn syncretism does it correlates and sees the interrelatedness of all things and so um, the, the beautiful worlds of opulence and sweetness to which we um, aspire and um, we um, long for, our soul is longing to be reunited with our, you know, creator or, or with the, the beautiful world from which um, all other worlds emanate from. Our, the, the the bliss the place of bliss and 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 there are there are different regions and and uh, grades of bliss that we can enjoy um, in that world but we must escape the material world so the Brahma Jyoti is everything above Brahma Jyoti from Brahma Jyoti upward is blissful and it is what the Hindus call Sat Chit Ananda Vigraha. So Sat means um, existence, and, and that's the root of Saturn, Sat, S-A-T. Yep. It's, it's the root of the word truth and existence. And so time, existence is time, and Saturn is old man Kronos. So um, every, there, is, there is existence, and Chit means um, uh, knowledge or consciousness and so there is consciousness and ananda means bliss so everything from brahma jyoti upward and you'll notice that the kingdoms above brahma jyoti uh notice this word here what's that word there Aish, aishvarya dham you see that word dham yeah yeah that's yeah. spelled d-h-a-m-a -A. you yeah, don't pronounce the you don't pronounce the last A, so you've got Dham. That is Adam, okay? Oh, Adam, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. and then and this is um, predominate, predominated by Krishna's opulence and, um, and this is like um, the throne of God and this is where people go like your, church, your good churchgoers who want to go beyond the white light and who want to worship God. And so there's a place where you can go where you can actually worship and be a worshipful, a worshipful being, individual, forever worshipping God in bliss. And then above that is the highest of all worlds, and it's, and it's a more personal world where um, the, the true person of God is. And that place is called... Um, you can, <clears throat> You can see here Madura Dham. So this is the highest Adam. This is, you know, the first uh, Logos, as you were speaking about before. And that is, um, this is a world predominate, predominated by sweetness. And in that world, you can have three forms of love for the Creator. You can have brotherly love, brotherly or sisterly. You can have 
fatherly love, fatherly or motherly, and um, the highest of all loves that you can express for the supreme being is conjugal. And so this is why the alchemists talk about the alchemical marriage, yeah. the, alche the alchemical wedding, um, because we can be wed with the supreme being. We can be we can be the wife or the husband of that being, and that being yeah. is not is not necessarily masculine or femi feminine. It is um, it is above these. Um, these uh, categorizations. It is Krishna is always with Radha, Radharani, his his wife, mother, consort, goddess, lover, mm -hmm. and so where there is one, there is always two. Where there is two, there is always three. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and so, um, this this world, the highest world, is where Bhagavan exists, and Bhagavan is God, the personal. And below God, the personal is Paramatma, and Paramatma is a mixture of personal and impersonal, the super soul of the universe. And then below that is Brahman, and um, and that is the impersonal effulgence of um, the Creator, and that's where people can live um, forever without their individuality. They all are absorbed into the One, mm -hmm. and and where they can they. Um, they uh, enjoy what is called here, quite appropriately, I think, um, the all-pervading impersonal bliss. So there's no activity there. There is no action. Whereas, um, personally, I aspire, I aspire to go to the top. You know, um, I would rather be active. Yeah. And so there's just a brief... Um, you know, a brief view of the uh, ancient cosmology and uh, and how they all tie in with um, the flat Earth plane, and um, it's easy to see that we've been hoodwinked, uh, Eilish. We've been um, we've been put on a um, a false um, uh, projection, a false uh, plane, in order to control us, and uh, through through shortages. So um, if we understand that there are worlds beyond and universes and each pocket of, of uh, known um, worlds is actually a universe unto itself. So our solar cell, our solar system, whatever you want to call it, is, um, is a universe. It's, it's, it's spherical inside and in the very, very heart of it is a plane. Um, and it's um, strung out like a, you know, um, like a musical instrument. Uh, there are seven tones below which make an octave, a diatonic octave, and there are seven planets so-called above which make another diatonic octave. And again, the number 16 uh, prefigures in all of our theologies the 16 um, words of the Maha Mantra, um, the 16 petals of the throat chakra. Uh, it's just uh, the degrees of the width of the analema at the top is 16 and then 32 doubled at the bottom. And so what we have here is the true cosmology is coming back. And so we're going to open our eyes as to where we live and we are going to um, neutralize the liars uh, by taking away their pet favorite uh, psyop lie um, and pull the carpet from under their feet. And you watch and see how that is going to um, change uh, politics forever in our little universe. Politics for sure because it, it, um, it suggests a divine intelligence creator and that's what they don't want they don't want to see us aspire to go beyond the dome into what's beyond the dome you know well it's more sinister than that um our souls are eternal and the bodies are not 
the body dies, and if you could watch the life of your body through a time lapse video camera, all you would see was a, a very, very healthy torus field at the start of your life when you were young. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, I've got a um, <coughs> some kind of a pollen thing happened today. My nose is really, really extremely itchy. I've been scratching it for about two hours now. Um, and so, uh, what was I saying? Sorry. Um, it's You were saying it's more sinister than that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me sort all this sneezing stuff out. Um, our souls are eternal. And our souls qualify to go to the highest of the abodes. You see, Jesus said, "In my Father's mansion, there are in my Father's um, house there are many, many mansions." Um, we don't have to go to the void, as some uh, voidists and nihilists are teaching. <clears throat> they are teaching that there is no God. No creator, no soul, no birth, no death. It's all an illusion. And then when your life, your body goes to the grave, you go back to the void. These, these are truths, but they are half-truths. And why should we buy into, into them when we can have absolute truth? And absolute truth is easy to get. You just have to do research, study. You just have to be not lazy. That's all you have to do. And you can find absolute truth. It's, it's, it's there. Uh, and, you, and you can do this quite easily with a sincere heart and a reasonable amount of intelligence that you bring to the table. And uh, the absolute truth is that... Our souls are the same in quality and substance as the prime creator, Krishna, Allah, Jehovah. And qualitatively, we are God. We are the same as God, but not quantitatively. So our source is from the highest source. And we qualify by good virtuous acts and deeds to go to the highest places and live in sweetness and opulence immortally um, forever in bliss, in pure bliss, unconditioned bliss. And we don't even have to, and we don't even have to um, be content with going to the white light as the monists teach. The monist will teach you, and a lot of these gurus kicking around these days, they're all teaching this, you are God, you are all that is and all that ever was and all that is will be and and you will go back to God the light and merge with him and be with him and that's basically spiritual suicide and that's fine you know I mean people want to do that they don't want to be active they don't want to have activity they want to um, you know merge with the one the impersonal Holy Spirit force of the Creator and stay there and um, they may even do that, you know, they may do that forever uh, or they may um, stay there for um, infinite amounts of time and then um, revert back to um, an active, um, more, um, well, active worship uh, um, and activity toward the, the creator. So the Brahma Jyoti white light, this, this is for people who... Um, who want to have a neutral love for the Creator. You know, they don't want to have any kind of, um, you know, activity. They, they know um, uh, the Creator. They love the Creator, but it's a neutral love. And so the, the truth that has been um, held uh, from us is this particular truth, that we can... Um, choose consciously uh, where we want to go forever. And um, by keeping us on a ball that um, evolved uh, through materialistic mechanisms and causes, 
Um, we now have a, a really a, a purely atheistic uh, construct which does not um, acknowledge any sort of causal influence um, on this on this construct and um, which is you know uh, which is totally um, uh, unacceptable and um, you know ca causes them to go around theorizing in circles forever and um, always you know acquiring knowledge but never coming to an accurate knowledge of truth so um, the true model of the flat plane it really settles all of the um, all of the um, endless arguments about gravity and it's you know it's going to go on forever and ever because it simply doesn't exist um, it's rather the laws of density and buoyancy which have always been there and which we've all always contemporaneously um, uh, enjoyed and subscribed to um, at the same time as we um, commit a, a, a practice of um, cognitive dissonance and subscribe to the gravity ball um, erroneous model. So it's interesting that we can have so, so much cognitive dissonance and that we, um, we, the truth is still there. You know, we, we know that um, on the flat earth the laws of um, density and buoyancy uh, and um, electromagnetism uh, rule and yet we default to um, what's been drilled into us through education um, uh, through erroneous means and pseudoscience and um, we flip-flop through um, the both of them and it's just quite incredible how uh, when you study and research this subject, you'll find that on the one hand, there is no evidence, no facts, no proofs, and no truths. And on the other side, um, weighing in favour of the flat earth, there is only evidence, only proof, only facts, and only truths. So, um, you know, it's a done deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm happy that um, I've married syncretism uh, with the flat earth model now. And uh, for the intelligent ones, I've noticed that not many intelligent people want, um, ask, um, oh, how does that now work with syncretism and the models that you've used in the past in your presentations? Surely now that, you know, you can't explain any of that. And um, I, I don't get any intelligent people um, asking those questions because they know, as I know, uh, and as I've always teach, taught <laughs> um, and, and teach in my presentation, that um, that everything comes from the ecliptic, and so um, I've explained how the ecliptic is produced. It's more correct than the um, ludicrous uh, ball um, Santa ball buffoon um, theory. And yeah. so now that's all you have to do. Uh, basically, you can still watch uh, all of my presentations, and all you have to do is um, have the the true model in your mind, and your intelligence will help you to see that it all still works well, perfectly. We, all right. Thank you, Santos. We have to go now. Thank you so oh. much for your time. Yep. Um, yeah, and thank you to CCN. We'll see you again next week. Oh, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you. Thank you for viewing this YouTube archive of a Conscious Consumer Network broadcast. Please feel free to share it far and wide. Check out our weekly broadcast guide for weekly updates on scheduled broadcasts. Help keep us on the air by contributing to our network support fund. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter or get in touch via email. We thank you for supporting free and independent media. Welcome everybody. My name is Eilish Diavolon and we are on we are the ones we've been waiting for. And this morning I have my dear friend Santos Bonacci who has been posting a lot of things about the flat earth on his blog and on his Facebook lately. Uh, so welcome Santos. Let's have a chat about the flat earth for um, people who are still yet to decide, still waiting on evidence. Um, let's have a look at what this is all about. 
Yeah, thanks, Eilish. Pleasure to be with you. And um, we have been trying to tee up an interview for a good while now. So finally, we're here together. And of course, my laptop uh, camera doesn't work. So I've got this little um, thingy here, right? <laughs> I'm shaking it just so that you know uh, that I've made a makeshift arrangement for today's show because I do want to... Um, I want to bring out my whiteboard and do some graphics to explain the flat earth model and how it works and in particular with regard to syncretism okay because um yep. because syncretism is um what i'm bringing to the table of course but um i have used i have defaulted to the um Copernican Keplerian uh, ball model with gravity um, against my better judgment, really. I mean, I should have uh, stuck with guys like um, <coughs> Al Biruni, Persian um, Islamic astrologer of a thousand years ago, Flat Earth. This is where our Flat Earth model, most of it comes from, Al Biruni, great astrologer. Uh, Ptolemy, yeah. Ptolemy is um, this supposedly this is the guy who got debunked by the Jesuit Copernicans who uh, brought this uh, this ball model to um, to the world around about uh, 1545 was when this all kicked off uh, the Jesuits were about seven years old by then with um, Ignatius Loyola and they basically um, started this um this ball theory and the people who there's two families in italy who founded the jesuits and one of them i know very very well because my mother was born um in a town in calabria italy called borgia wow. and the borgia yeah the borgia family they've put a lot of popes on the throne in rome this is a spanish family and of course yeah. so when I went down to um, Calabria two years ago, I went to see my relatives, on my uh, maternal uh, relatives in Borgia, and I went to the cathedral there, and uh, and I did see that the Borgia name was very, very prominent. Now, um, the other family is the Farnese family, and Farnese has its root in Farsi, which is Persia. Okay? Now, these are the two families that have interest in, in bringing us the ball... Uh, globe globalist model now supposedly um, Ptolemy was debunked you see his geocentric model was debunked by uh, Copernicus the Jesuit um, and so what I'm going to do today Eilish is I'm going to show you our Western model because Al Biruni is still considered a Westerner. The Arabs, uh, it's I know it's East, but it's not East in terms of um, the two ad astrological schools we have. We have Jotish in the East, which we uh, erroneously call um, Hindu astrology or Vedic astrology. It is connected to Vedic wisdom, but it's called Jotish. Jotish means the science of light. So, so we have these two blocks and and. The Eastern Bloc of Jotish astrology, they also have this um, geocentric model. And so does the, the Western, which is the Albiruni Ptolemaic um, Western model. And I'm going to show you that today. And so supposedly uh, Copernicus came along and um, debunked um, Ptolemy, right? So now in my presentations, I've used the ball model and shown that um, basically everything depends everything depends on the ecliptic so what we have here is a ball earth and we have an equator and we have this very very special sine wave which is what astrology and everything is based on this this sine wave of the ecliptic um, actually teaches and shows how everything in the universe manifests right yeah. so so now and this is the model that we all 
know from school we have been taught this model okay now I've based my syncretism on this graphic this sine wave and and defaulted to the Copernican model now the science of syncretism does not depend on any particular shape of the earth for it to work. It depends on the sine wave. Now the sine wave is totally independent of um, shape or um, uh, size of the earth because it happens. The ecliptic is always happening. The sun is there doing its work along a trajectory we call the ecliptic and it does it year in year out and that is the source of all of the influences and all of what happens in nature in our solar system which i'm going to be calling a solar cell and yeah. i'm going to show yeah now i'm going to show how it is that we live in a cell or in spheres on a flat plane earth in the middle right. and Yes, and now what I'm going to be doing is showing that from the true ancient cosmologies. So, and 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 what I'll be doing is also showing the uh, um, the the Vedic version and harmonising it, syncretising it with the West. Okay, so on a flat Earth, you will have something like this. It's a circle. Okay. Yep. Now I'm sorry. I'm sorry about. Um, this camera is going to be a problem. I, I wish my um, I wish my computer laptop uh, camera was working. It is um, very very unfortunate, but these are the things that happen, you know, when you um, when you work like this, you know. Uh, I don't have um, we don't have a million dollar um, you know production teams, do we? I've got to get the right angle. Okay, so. So what I showed before was the the ball earth model mm -hmm. and this now is the um, this now is the um, the flat earth model what you have here I'm just paying attention of my neighbors coming I'm gonna have to tell him that um, I'm doing a show just just bear with 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 me one minute Yeah, and um, I suppose we'll have to do the um, Wi-Fi, maybe? Yeah, if it affects the uh, video quality, I'll have to let you know, but I'm on camera, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me again, I have to do something. <laughs> um, I'm just turning the Wi-Fi on because someone needs the uh, internet here, so just bear with me. Okay. Uh, Wi-Fi. I hope it does not affect the um, the, the quality of the video. If it does, well, you'll let me know, and I'll just have to turn it off. Yep. Yep. Okay. Wi-Fi is not on yet. <laughs> well, you're still sounding and uh, and looking good, Santos. Me looking good, <laughs> nice and clear. That's an oxymoron, sister. Wi-Fi is on. Right. Good. All right. Now, so you can see my board there. Now, what I'm doing here is um, I'm I'm going to show how very very easy and very very simple it is to go yeah. from the to go from the erroneous sphere ball model to the correct flat earth model. This is um, the center of the earth. This is called, um, this is what we call the North Pole in the center, okay? Now let yep. me try and get that camera away from. Yep, pretty that, good, nice. Is that good? Okay. What we have here is, that will be the Tropic of Cancer. Yeah. Um, and this will be the Tropic of Capricorn. And so of course, Australia is out here um we actually had the solstice uh, yesterday eilish the 21st of yeah. december so so the sun is now at this point here um our friend the sun is right here now at this extremity and this is the tropic of cancer and here we have 
the equator. The equator. And what is happening is the sine wave is now is produced as the sun goes from this tropic to that tropic uh, through the equator. Mm. Okay, so the equator is the middle section here. It's the, um, yeah. the part that divides these two extremities. Now, so this is where the sine wave is produced. And what I want to show you is another um, action that occurs. So on the flat plane, <laughs> Thanks. You're doing well, Santos. Oh, look. <laughs> it's a very, very good camera, but um, if I had have had time, I would have set it up because we only just found out that it wasn't working uh, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. So on a flat plane, what we have is this. We have um, the Earth is a flat plane like this. Yep. Oh my goodness! Is that is that all right? I, I keep getting off the centre. Okay, and what we have is um, the cosmologies teach us that there's a mountain in the centre in the North Pole called Magnetic Mountain or Mount Meru. Mount Meru, yes. Sometimes this is called Mount Sumeru, Mount Sumeria in Israel, uh, or Mount Moriah. This is a magnetic mountain, and the color of this is blue. It is lapis blue. So it blends yeah. in with the sky, and so it's the same color, and so this cannot be seen. And the sun, what Whoa. the sun is doing, at the Tropic of Cancer, the, the sun does circles high up in the sky, and at the Tropic of Capricorn, its circles are much lower and closer to the Earth, and yeah. this, this will be the center line what we call the equator and so what we have is the sun is now here on the 21st of December at the Tropic of Can Capricorn closer to the earth much much closer to the earth at the Tropic of Capricorn and what it does is it climbs up on an incline as it goes up to the Tropic of Cancer every year so for yeah. six months it's waxing yeah and then for six months it's uh, waning Right, and it's going back and forth, and what it's doing is it's this is a vortex. Right. Yep. Um, and this is what in the in the scriptures is called uh, the tabernacle of the sun. You see, um, and what is happening is um, above in in the cosmologies. This is where uh, Brahma lives. This is Brahma Loka. The gods, the demigods, live on top of this mountain. And so in the scripture in Psalm 19.4, uh, I think it is, we'll have a look at this in my uh, PowerPoint presentation that I've prepared, um, what you'll find is it says there that the Lord is sitting above the circle of the earth and he has set a tabernacle, a canopy, a tent for the sun. Well, this, this is the tent. As the sun goes up, it... Um, it contracts as it goes toward uh, the Tropic of Cancer and it brings the summer climes. And so then as it goes back down toward the Tropic of uh, Capricorn, it expands and it brings the winter in that breath. Of course, it brings the summer for us here in the, in the uh, Southern Hemisphere and that's simply because the sun is down here and it is closer to the earth and it is above our country more yeah. so because it reaches um it reaches that latitude okay um whereas um this this action of the sun going up to the uh, tropic of cancer and the tropic of cancer um from cancer to capricorn um year in year out this is causing this is like a breath this is the breath of Rama or Brahma. And so as it breathes out, it expands. And see, these, these circles that the sun does, um, these are all 24-hour circles. So you see we have a variable speed sun. Obviously, the sun is slower here at the Tropic of Cancer and much faster at the Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah, to get, to get around that distance. Yes, and um, and so 
when I when I started to understand this, I um, put a lot of time into understanding the analema. We're going to have a look at the analema, and we're going to see slides of the analema and see how it works with the flat Earth model, and it only works with the flat Earth model. And this is where it all clicked for me, Eilish. I um I started studying um flat Earth seriously a couple of years ago and prior to that I had lots of you know kooky people send me these videos um, showing the flat earth model and of course um, I um, let me get this camera back on back on me there <laughs> so I'm not talking to the um, is that can you see me there yep yep goody all right now um, so I would just uh, press the delete button <laughs> and uh, or send rude um, messages <laughs> to them and tell them to stop sending me this uh, flat earth nonsense, right? So, um, but as I um, was getting more and more people um, sending them to me, I was compelled to research it because you have some, you have a, a sense of duty, don't you? Because if yeah. you're actually, if you're actually teaching a model that you've defaulted to against your better judgment, because I know I, I knew of these guys, you know, and trust these guys much more than I would trust um, uh, Copernicus and Kepler, because they also stipulated very, very carefully, and so did um, uh, Newton with his g gravity uh, teachings, that they are theories, and they are, um, you know, and they are presumptions and assumptions. You know, they are, they are just. Um, uh, numbers and calculations and theories and whatnot. So, um, you know, we've already been uh, preempted by these guys that uh, they they're just screwing with our heads, really, and giving us some theories to think about, right? <laughs> whereas, whereas these guys, your Alberuni types, um, they clearly um, um, made stipulated in their writings that these cosmologies go way way back and are rock solid and uh, concrete as absolute truth and to be taken as absolute truth you see this is where the relative truthers come along and teach half truths um, everything uh, based on the ball earth and the the sphere that supposedly we supposedly we live on is um, based on this very, very worldly wise um, false science. It's pseudoscience. Yeah. Um, so what happened was um, I started um, putting a lot of time into the analema. And so what I'll do now is I'll share my screen with you so we can have a look at some uh, pictures of the analema and show how that actually uh, confirms that we're living um, on a flat earth. Before I do that, I just want to show one more thing on the board here while I've got this um, this graphic up. The analema is like a, um, a figure eight. So it looks like this. We shall have, have a look at some slides of it. And the equator is actually going through at that point there. Okay, that, that's, that's the analema we're going to have a look at, okay? This is um, the figure eight that the sun scribes in the sky every year as it goes from the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn. So the bottom is the Tropic of Capricorn where we are right now on the 21st or 22nd of December. Yep. Yeah, just checking. It is. <laughs> okay. So, so... um. Yep. So here we are now. What what the sun is doing is it's doing wide circles. You can see that by the analema. You can see that the bottom half of the analema is much much wider. In fact, it is thirty eight degrees, uh, thirty two degrees wide. Um, it's forty seven degrees from tropic to tropic. So that's forty seven degrees long, thirty two degrees wide here. 16 degrees wide here and the crossing here where it crosses here is exactly eight and a half degrees above the line of the equator now just those figures 
alone should be should stagger the mind, Eilish. Your mind should just have a short circuit. The 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 fact that the eight here crosses at eight and a, eight and a half degrees above the equator is just absolutely staggering. And so but, um, I did this graphic because now we're going to go to the um, slide presentation and you'll see why and it'll make much more sense how the analema ties, ties it all in together. Uh, so now share screen. Down the bottom. Yeah. The green. Yep. Share screen. Can you see my screen now? Are you seeing my screen? You are. Okay. So, what we need to share screen. Um, oh, here we go. Yes, now we have it. Yes, thank you. Okie dokie. Let's go to the start. So, um, all right. So, you're looking at my screen, are you? We don't need these... Um, these little pictures here, then, do we, of us? Um, that's fine. That, that, the pictures of us will just, yeah, stay there and, yeah, we've got the presentation there. Yep. Wow. Ooh, okay. Here we go. So this is, uh, this is what the flat Earth projection looks like, the plan view, and you see Antarctica is um, the circumference there on the outside um, circling the whole Earth. That's what we call the South Pole, and this yeah. is why this is why um, countless uh, um, sailors that have tried to circumnavigate Antarctica have spent years doing so, including Captain Cook. He spent, um, I think, nearly four years, and he logged uh, sixty to seventy thousand miles, and he still did not completely circumnavigate Antarctica. Reason yeah. being is because <laughs> it's because um, it's longer than it's probably about 75,000, 85 or between 75 and 85,000 in, um, in circumference. Um, and if it was a little island on the bottom of a ball, Santos, it would only take a, a short time to circumnavigate. If it's just a little icy island at the bottom of a ball, it shouldn't take that long, right? Well, it would take about, um, think about it, how long would it take to do uh, to um, travel 12,000 kilometres? You'd probably do it in about six weeks. You should be able to, you know, do it now anyway. In modern times, they should be able to do it. Um, they should be able to fly around it in a, um, in a, in a jet and, and film the whole thing. They don't and they won't because they can't um, as, as we will see this is this is quite a different world in which we live we live in quite a different world to how the materialist evolution Darwinian evolution model types are painting for us they have no idea no idea at all at least what you will see in today's presentation you will come closer to the truth than you will ever ever be because uh, have been because um, we need to marry syncretism with the flat earth model and because syncretism it subscribes to the ancient cosmologies and the ancient cosmologies will teach us how uh, how the universe verses are created and um, where it is that we live this is um, the sun and the moon in their circles above the earth it appears at this um, uh, point they are somewhere in the middle this looks like they are somewhere in the uh, equator region it doesn't look like um, it's high above Australia there on the Tropic of Capricorn and it doesn't look uh, uh, as tight enough of a circle to be at the Tropic of um, Cancer Cancer is much much smaller of a circle there is the um, Gleason map. I've ordered this. Um, I should have had it in the mail weeks ago, but um, it keeps going to the wrong address. <laughs> and the guy at um, at the uh, uh, location where they make print these uh, maps, he's getting very frustrated. He's had it come back to him three times. But this is the um, 
this is the true map of the earth that we uh, live on. Uh, I want to get one. So you can buy them still, Santos? Yeah, I, I bought the big one. It's um, about $110 and it has uh, all of this, um, what's called, it's the um, equidistant azimuthal proje projection. So equidistant azimuthal. Um, that's what it's called. It's, you know, the pl uh, flat earth is basically just a, a simplified way of describing the planet on which we live. Planet. <laughs> yes, and it is. That's what planet means. It means plane. Mm -hmm. And so what you see here, this is very, very telling, this uh, cartoon-like um, depiction of the, um, the cosmos. You see the spheres in which we live. We live in these um, uh, spheres. There are 10 of them, as they teach in um, Kabbalah, the 10 Sephiroth, the tree of 10 Sephiroth, and they are concentric circles. Okay, so I won't dwell on them um, so much right now, but this is um, a depiction of of these spheres and this is not a correct one by the way um, what they've done here is they've put the flat earth down here and um, and yeah, above yeah. that they've put the uh, a dome and they call it a, a, a solid dome um, now I'm this is wrong it's this is not right it's it's not correct um, especially the fact that they've put the stars in there. All the fixed stars do not belong to that first sphere. This dome-like structure called the firmament does not belong here. It belongs in the eighth sphere. There are wow. seven, yeah, there are seven spheres before that sphere, okay? And so, but um, this is more or less correct, and it shows... Notice those three uh, layers underneath the flat earth there. You notice the green layers below? Yeah. Right. There are seven more of these planets under our earth. Okay, so um, it's an octave system. Our earth is the topmost, and um, below that are seven um, inferior gross planets. Now, the seven superior planets, they are Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And they are not planets. They are stars. Okay, those, the Sun and the Moon are called luminaries. Yeah. And, and the so-called planets, Venus, Mercury, etc., those are stars. They are luminous bodies. Astronauts with physical bodies cannot go there. You can't go to Mars. Now, these people who think they've gone to Mars, they've gone somewhere, yes, <laughs> but they haven't gone to Mars because you, you can't go to Mars as a physical body, not these bodies. So um, astronauts are telling poo-poos and so are the people who believe they've gone to Mars and back and what have you. Um, they're not telling direct lies because they do believe they went to Mars because they were told they went to Mars. Yeah, they but were they're actually somewhere, right? There's a colony somewhere, but is that is that on one of the inferior Earths? Would you say? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It's it's um, at the very least, it's one of those seven planets that resembles Mars in the higher octave. Right. Okay. Now. I, I probably should wait for some further slides before I go into this because um, people need to see the structure of the heavens according to the ancients before I, you know, before I jump in and preempt um, the 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 true wisdom with my own, you know, clouding and my own um, very um, insufficient. Uh, language skills and eloquence you know no one can do justice to the cosmological system um, ever you you must have a spiritualized intuitive mind activated to at least be able to um, attempt to conceive it and understand it 
you know, whereas some people would just jump off and, and say, oh, this is all nonsense, and rather they would um, rather subscribe to the consensus reality model of the globe because everybody else believes it. And, and without any proofs or evidences, it's, it's simply ridiculous. So um, let me just get through a few more slides and then uh, I'll be able to expound on this much, much further. This is the Kabbalistic system, okay? Um, in the center here, you have the earth. The earth is Malkuth. It is the 10th sphere. It is the earthly plane. And above it, you see the, the seven rings starting from the moon and then going to Saturn. And then above Saturn is the firmament. That's what's the firmament. That's where the true firmament is. So in the first um, uh, slide we saw just prior to this one, this one here, um, you, can see, you can see the stars are first, and then above that they've got um, the moon, then Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and then there's nothing beyond that, and on top is the throne of God. Well, this is, um, slight, this is wrong because those stars should be above Saturn. Right. And this is the correct model, okay? So I'm offering this presentation, this slide, so that we can um, be able to conceive it in our mind's eye, okay? Now, now so the firmament is this starry abode here. Uranus is the ruler of that eighth sphere. And those are the fixed stars of the zodiac and all of the 48 um, uh, ancient fixed constellations. There are now um, 88 modern constellations, but the original ones were 48. All of those stars, they are all in the firmament, okay, with the exception of a few stars, such as Sirius, um, Ursa Major, um, the Pleiades, probably the Orion system and Canis Major, all right? So there are some exceptions, but 99% of the stars you see in the sky, they all belong to this um, sphere, the eighth sphere, and that's where the, the fixed stars are. And this sphere actually precesses. This is where precession occurs because it is... Um, not syncing with the sun's um, ecliptic. So in other words, on the 21st of March um, at the equinox, rather than the, star, um, the equinox pointing to Aries, it's now pointing to Aquarius. So we say that we are in the age of Aquarius. Well, that's because this particular firmament, this starry sphere is precessing, okay? And and your sidereal astrologists, like your Jotish and Vedic astrologers, they use the stars in that sphere to denote the stars of the zodiac, whereas in the Western uh, tropical system, the constellations are actually on the ecliptic. And so those never precess. So the tropical system, which is what I'm teaching, and... and um, it's also biblical and uh, hermetic astrology is um, based on the ecliptic, okay, the sine wave. Now, now, above the firmament is what's called the crystalline sea. This is the ninth sphere. And then above the crystalline sea, which is ruled by Neptune, it is a sphere of water, psychic water. And these are the waters above the firmament. So above the firmament, there is water, and below the earth, there is water, okay? The earth is suspended by waters. And, and then above this ninth sphere is what's called the primum mobile, which means the first motion. So the first motion is, is fixed and firm, and so is the earth. That's why we call it terra firma. Terra firma means it is firm. It's not moving. Okay. And the scriptures do tell us that, um, that uh, the Lord cr uh, created the earth and firmly estab established its pillars. 
See, the earth is firmly established. Is that why we can't see uh, we can't see any movement of the northern star if we're in the northern hemisphere? Whenever we're at, around the North Pole, that it it never wavers. It always it, it's l almost like the axis point. Exactly. That, that, yeah. It is the axis point. In fact, Polaris is directly abru directly abru <laughs> above <laughs> above. Brahmas, that's what I was trying, trying to merge those two words, um, <laughs> above Brahmas um, uh, uh, locale, you could call it, or loka, which is above that mountain in the centre of the North Pole. What we are going to learn, uh, Eilish, and, and we are going to understand from, from now on and forevermore, is that the cosmos we live in is a beautiful creation of a very, very intelligent primal cause, the root cause of all causes. And in the West, we call that, you know, I don't know, Jehovah, Allah, Christ. In the East, they call it Krishna. And um, this intelligence of beautiful form and, um, and omnipotence, omniscience and omnipresence is everywhere a conscious being permeating all of the universe and this is this is what we're going to learn we're going to get away from the mechanical um, um, evolutionary uh, global model that we've been in, uh, that we've inherited from the uh, sociopaths that have uh, created this false scarcity shortage um, energy shortage model of a um, of a ball, but we'll get to that. There's there's plenty of time for um, getting into that. I think um, uh, it is more important to establish the the roots of our cosmological system first. So here we see um, we see the scriptures. Sorry, sorry, Santos. Just a just a comment or a question. Um, from what I'm, the graphic I'm looking at, it reminds me very much of the Russian doll logos um, point of view that was written about um, by Dr. Joshua David Stone, in which um, there's, you know, for example, the logos, which is the soul that inhabits this body, and then the planetary logos, and then the um, solar logos, the galactic logos, and so forth. So almost like a, a and and um, that particular graphic that you're showing at the moment reminds me of of the the embodiment of the divine within the logos system, as in the series of Russian dolls example. Yes, yes, perfect. Um. The pursuit of a free, fair, just, sustainable world should be the focus of every person on our planet. The reason it is not is because people are kept distracted by the illusions and deceit propagated by the corporately controlled mainstream media. In recent years, the rise in truly informed, savvy researchers and journalists who have all taken to the air in various capacities has given rise to a new genre of media. We have seen the explosion of truly free and independent media and thus the need to create an ethical live broadcast network that facilitated these brave and tireless souls became apparent. With a great amount of research and meticulous planning, Conscious Consumer Network was created. CCN is the first of its kind broadcast network that is specifically dedicated to free and independent media with absolutely no government control corporate sponsorship or advertising. The live broadcast network runs full time with an average of 25 shows and live broadcasts a week. The high definition live stream is free to view and is accessible from any computer terminal with online access, including laptops, tablets, smartphones and smart TVs. All shows are archived onto YouTube and are freely available to view in order to educate and inform as many as we can without imposing monetary limitations. 
CCN was successfully launched on the 1st of January 2015 and has gone from strength to strength as we have improved and increased the capacities and functionalities of the network as well as an ever-rotating and improving lineup of content which is broadcast daily. CCN is blessed to be the home of some of the hardest hitting, most cutting edge, truly educational and informative materials. Catch interviews, reviews and talk shows from the many different and beautiful perspectives from CCN's family of interviewers and broadcasters. Since the 1st of January 2015, we have produced over 800 shows, we have over 2 million YouTube minutes watched every month and we have an average of a million hits a day on CCN's website. CCN is viewed in over 147 different countries and hosts broadcasters from 5 different continents. The time has now come to generate funding to keep CCN on the air for the duration of 2016. The total sum needed to continue broadcasting for 2016 is $60,000. This budget includes the replacement of computer equipment, the acquisition of secure servers which are most needed as we keep getting hacked, plus the renewal of the broadcast license fee for 2016. This is a fraction of the annual budget used by mainstream media networks producing a similar quantity of content. This is what makes CCN so successful, unique and accessible, is the ability to run a project of this size and reach on such minimal resources. CCN does not claim ownership over any of the material we produce and broadcast, as we firmly believe that information is the common heritage of all beings, and thus CCN belongs to you, the public, and it is up to you all to keep CCN going. CCN would like to thank those who have contributed to the network in the past with resources, content, information, time and energy. We thank you for supporting free and independent media.